Hello and welcome to a new tutorial series on the Prismatica Dev channel. This one is called something, uh, something to do with Niagara, something to do with particles, preferably something with uh, alliteration like a uh, uh, pathway to particle perfection. I don't know. If you've got a good name, uh, put it in the comments, please. I'm begging you. So. What are we going to be covering in this tutorial series? Well, we are going to be covering Niagara Particle System. We're not going to be worrying about Cascade. This is applicable to Unreal Engine 4 and 5. I think the more important thing to note is what we aren't covering, and that is specific use cases like how do I make a blood particle system or how do I make a explosion particle system and how do I make a very specific thing you know charlie do all the work for me i can't be bothered using my brain we're not doing that we are going to be going through much like my material series each little individual component or they're actually called modules in niagara uh what it does and what we can use it for now the last thing to note before we dive in is that particles are 50 percent particle logic and 50 percent material logic so i'm gonna be assuming that you are up to date with everything in the five minute materials series i'm only going to be going into depth about the actual particle side of things and the particle side of the materials so the first thing that we're going to be looking at today is how do we make a particle system well we right click we go to effects and we want to go to a Niagara emitter. Now, Niagara systems are built in kind of three layers, I guess. Um, there is a system, which is the the, the biggest, you know, the, the top layer, uh, like the container, I guess. So the, the system is the thing that actually gets spawned in the world. Then that system contains an emitter or multiple emitters. And each of those emitters contain modules that tell the particles how to behave and what they're doing and when they die and all that kind of stuff right now we're going to create an emitter um and we're just going to do an empty one i think empty is a good place to start all right we double click on it and all of a sudden we are in the niagara editor interface thingo thingo as you can see there is literally nothing going on here there's not too much going on here uh, and there's a lot of stuff going on here. This is basically just the, the details panel, you know, so if I click on initialize particle, then we get all of the, the details related to this module. Um, so initialize particle is, you know, where you set the lifetime of the particle, where you set the, the size. So in order to actually get something happening on the screen, we need to add a module that is going to spawn particles so we're going to do that in the emitter update section we're going to go uh, we'll do spawn rate so spawn rate is going to spawn continuously you know over time so spawn rate spawn rate 10 it's going to be spawning 10 particles per second now in the initialize these are lasting for five seconds and you can see that it just looks like a, a white dot uh, it's pretty boring now, the reason it's just a white dot is because we're not actually telling these particles that are being spawned to do anything. We're not saying, you know, move, we're not adding velocity, we're not adding wind force, we're not blah, 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 blah. So, on particle spawn, we can add a velocity. Now, whenever you add something and you get this red error, the warning is usually very comprehensive. It'll tell you exactly what to do in order to fix it. So all that's happening in this case is there is just a module that doesn't exist that needs to exist for add velocity to work. So that is apply initial forces. We're going to click fix issue. Cool. Okay. So we could go here. We could go random vector, uh, vector scale. We could do random float, random range float between one and I don't know, a hundred. And then in the particle update, we also need a solve forces and velocity. That's just another dependency that I completely f ignored in the warning. All right, one last little thing that we'll do is we will go to initialize particle. 
Uh, we're going to go to the sprite size mode and we're going to set it to uniform. Now the uniform sprite size, let's just do, I don't know, random range float again. We love that one. Between 10 and 100. Okay, 100's a bit too big. 50. So this is going to make them random sizes. Uh, 50 is also too big. Let's just do 10 and 20. And then what we can do in particle update is go scale mm, sprite size. And we are going to, we'll just select a preset. Um, we're going to grab, uh, actually, maybe I could do like a bell curve. Yeah, drop off. And so what this is going to do is it's getting the normalized age as the, the time value. So normalized age is zero to one over the lifetime of the particle, you know, regardless of what its lifetime is. Uh, and then we're just saying go from scale one and then multiply by zero. So you can see as these particles finish up their lifespan, they shrink out into nothingness just so they disappear nicely. Okay, so we've set up a super simple kind of pointless little thing. Now, why have we done this in an emitter and not a, a system? The way I like to use emitters is emitters are like the the template for you know a, a particle type for example let's just say i have some sparks from fire you know sparks the little those sparks will act in the same way regardless of how i'm kind of spawning them so for example we could have sparks that are just coming from a fire that are you know they they kind of float around uh, their color goes from super glowing hot to dark, and then they disappear. Um, they last for X amount of seconds. They're affected by the wind this much. They'll always have that same functionality, that same logic. But if I wanted to do something like, you know, a, a magic spell where a character like just shoots sparks out of their hand and the sparks get shot out, or if I wanted to do something like the sparks coming off a weapon and, you know, when the weapon gets swung, these sparks kind of shoot off of the weapon, um, you know, matching its velocity. That's where I would use a different system that uses that same emitter as the template for the thing. So as a little example, I'm just going to go through and make a, a spark really quickly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some drag. We're going to get some curl noise force. I'm also going to make the scale way freaking smaller. We're going to scale the sprite size by speed. So we're going to make it get thin and long as it goes fast. Uh, we need to make sure that this is velocity aligned. Align, velocity align. There we go. Now they're kind of stretching out as they go along. Uh, we could give it some wind force. Uh, I'm not going to bother plugging this wind into a Niagara parameter collection because that's a thing for another day. All right, and then we're going to update the color. And what we'll do is we will make a color from curve. We're going to make them start as, I don't know, very yellow. Then they are going to turn red and then they will turn black. All right, so here's our super basic particle system. Looks pretty dodge. But basically what we've done is we've set up a template for, you know, sparks. So what we'll do now is we're going to get this emitter. We're going to right click. We're going to create a Niagara system. Call it Spark Burst. And then let's make another one. Create a Niagara system. This one can be called Spark Area. So we now have this system. And as you can see, it's basically the, the same thing as before. Uh, but what we're going to do, instead of spawn rate, we're going to override this. So we're going to click disable. Then we're going to go here. We're going to go spawn burst instantaneous. Spawn count of 1000. And now this system is what gets put in the world. So we can put this in the world. Um, it should continue to like... Yeah, just loop over and over because I haven't specified it to, you know, only happen once. So the next little system that we're going to do, this is the, we call this one Spark Area. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to get rid of the add velocity at the start. 
And what we will do is on particle spawn, we're going to specify an area. So like a cylinder location. The radius of this cylinder can be like 300. And the height can be much smaller, maybe like 10 or something. And so now we have this spark area effect. And we can just put this in the world and bam, we have some sparks that are spawning in an area continuously. So this could be used for, you know, something like lava or, you know, when something's on fire or whatever. This could be used for explosions. But you can see that the sparks have the exact same kind of core functionality. You know, they have this kind of noise vector, you know, random kind of rotation, whatever. They get thinner and longer as they go faster. And then as they die off, they change into red and then they turn into like little ashes for a bit. And it was kind of as simple as that. We created these two completely different systems from our template emitter that we that we created. So that's how I use emitters just to make life way easier. So you don't have to repeat yourself over and over again. So that kind of concludes the, uh, the video for today. Uh, I didn't want to go too deep into it. We will be playing with a lot of other cool effects. Like you can see this sword blood trail that I have here. Um, looks pretty gruesome, pretty goopy. And you know, I've got some other cool things here. Uh, you can see like, like I was saying, you know, like sparks that follow the direction of, you know, whatever their parent is and all that, all that fun stuff. Nothing personnel, kid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, that's that's the video. I hope you learned something. I hope this was a nice little introduction. If you do have recommendations for the name of this series, please drop them in the uh, comments below. If you do want to ask any questions, the best place to do so is in our Discord, which is linked below. If you do want to support this channel one step further, then, you know, subscribing and liking the video and commenting on it and algorithm, blah, 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 blah. You can do so monetarily for as little as $1 per month in the Patreon, which is linked in the description. I hope that you are looking forward to the Particle series. So with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.